fellow survivors. Welcome to the State of Decay 2 stream. I'm your host, Jeffrey Card, and today we are getting into the gauntlet. So if you have not yet gotten to the end of Heartland and you're really not into spoilers, this might not be the stream for you. Uh, you might want to wait and watch this on YouTube later because we're going to be playing through the gauntlet, which is the last part of the game. And uh, I don't know how far into the gauntlet we expect to get in an hour, but uh, we'll, 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 we'll leave that up to Christina, uh, who you're going to meet in just a moment. But first, we should meet some of the people who were involved in making the gauntlet. So this is, first off, Walter Williams. Hello, Walter. How are you doing? Uh, tell the folks what you did on the gauntlet. Um, bit of everything. <laughs> uh, you, what did I do on the gauntlet? <laughs> so, so you were the designer assigned to it, right? Yeah, so what would you say you do here? <laughs> pressure. Cameras scare me. Um, primarily setting up... Uh, Primarily setting up the events, the situations, working with all the other departments to get everything we needed, sound, code support, um, QA. Well, I was secondary in that most of the time. There was someone else who was much better at it than I am. Um, <laughs> Playtesting, just balancing, playing with numbers, playing with spawns, so doing cool. volumes. So Quinn, who's the project lead, basically kind of handed the gauntlet off to you. And you it was your job to design and manage like the whole process of trying to make this thing work. Yeah. And then Aaron who's sitting next to you, was the producer on the gauntlet. Hello, Aaron. Hello, again. <laughs> so last time that you were on the stream, you weren't able to talk about what you were working on because no. it was the gauntlet. And it was killing me. You guys keep asking me, uh, what feature, how big is the feature you're working on? What do you like working on? And I'm like, I can't tell you anything. <laughs> so now you know the feature that I've been working on here was massive. It was a DLC, so, yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, <laughs> this would be impossible without Christina Basham, uh, who is from QA, and she is here because of the, of the four of us, she's probably the one with the, most, uh, the best chance of surviving the yes. gauntlet. <laughs> yes. yeah. So how many times have you actually like, fought a plague wall now? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Millions. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, why don't we actually get started with the gameplay? Um, and so... I gotta really thank uh, Joe Swarner because he put together this save file. He actually played Heartland for hours uh, in order to get us to this point. So, uh, Christina, do you want to like tell us what it is you've got here? Um, yeah. So um, I had some requests for Joe. Um, one of them was I wanted Reba um, with uh, basically her skills maxed. Um, oh wow, he did that too. Yeah, um, which he did with no cheating, um, because. No joke. I like resourcefulness because I like being able to carry a ton of stuff, um, and uh, I like uh, butchery because of the leg sweep. Uh, I like yeah. being able to make crawler zombies, so <laughs> that's why I picked her. Um, and I asked for tons of Molotovs, and uh, of course... <laughs> How many bloaters did he harvest? <laughs> Holy crap, Joe, are, thank you. There are a lot, yeah. So, okay, so for people who are not aware of what the gauntlet was and uh, decided to watch the stream anyway. Uh, Walter, do you want to give us a primer on like, just what's going on here? Where is she headed? Um, well, she's headed into downtown Marshall. Um, we, we primarily chose this location for a couple reasons. Nostalgia and actually space. Mm -hmm. um, when you want something like a horde mode, when you want to push people to the edge and get them really afraid, uh, you look at basic horror situations, you want to minimize space, you want to screw with lighting, you want to play with some weird sounds. And this is probably one of the most dense locations mm -hmm. in yeah, all ahead. of Heartland. Yeah, uh, go, so you go ahead and start playing okay. if you want to. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so 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 she's gonna kick this off by doing what here? <laughs> <laughs> Just a plague buster. <laughs> flinging a plague buster here. Okay, so yes. you fling a plague buster, which is uh, a thing you learned about partway through Heartland, and now you're setting it on fire and Perfect. shooting it at the same time. There you go. First, wow. first section down. Oh, actually, you know what? I have made a terrible mistake, and oh. I have... Where did that barrel come from? I have covered up the HUD Ambient with our camera. Ferals. So periodically, <laughs> I'll, have to, feral. I'll have to make us go away so you can see okay. the HUD. So yeah, is a feral supposed to show up for the first time? It's an ambient one. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, no, they're just not really supposed wrecked. to show up. <laughs> yeah, but that's OK. Uh, and a juggernaut, too. <laughs> These are not Whoa. supposed to be here. <laughs> <laughs> if he did this. Well, Joe would have pushed through it, and most likely the spawns, yeah. the ambient spawns, okay. are near max at this point. Yeah, yeah no, that's true. And, and so I, I wonder if, I wouldn't put it past Joe to have oh, deliberately yeah. led some freaks here. <laughs> sure. 
Oh, wow. So these Blood Plague ferals are ridiculous. So these guys are all new enemies uh, to, to State of Decay 2. Uh, of the Blood Plague freaks, which ones are your favorites? Like, uh, Aaron? Ooh. Do you have a favorite? Or are they just all equally terrifying? They're all pretty terrifying. Right. My favorite is probably the feral. I really like the feral. Because it's just, it's so creepy. We have this great um, screenshot in our marketing folder that is of them, like, running like this. And their claws are all up and their little heads. I don't know. I do not know how Alan got that screenshot. It's That's amazing. ridiculous. It's amazing. <laughs> so, I don't know. I just like the way they look. And you never know when they're kind of coming. They just hit you from the side and take you <laughs> yeah. out, you know? It's almost like they know where the camera is and they're like deliberately <laughs> yeah. arranging themselves. <laughs> what about you, Walter? You got a favorite? I like the Screamer, actually. Um, I feel like the evolution in this situation was really good. Uh, and it's a pain. Like, it's, it's a slow burn. If you do not pay attention to a Screamer, you will not have a good day. <laughs> Especially in the golf. Because they don't seem that scary, right? They don't look they don't look like they're gonna hurt you, but then suddenly they make everything else hurt you. They're a force multiplier. <laughs> they're literally a moving uh, a moving call to zombies. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright, so um, when you very first started working on the gauntlet, like what what did it look like? Was it was it pretty much like this or did it did it kinda have to evolve over time? Oh it was uh I mean Luis did great. We had a lot of the uh, prefabs and buildings in, and then I went through and made it not pretty by putting a bunch of gray boxing down <laughs> to start <laughs> testing the flow. So it was, I was lipsticking, oh no, I guess he, lipsticking the pig does not work in this situation. Never mind <laughs> dropping the metaphor. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was, it was, it was what looks like early projects, the kind of stuff you'd see on itch. Just boxes gray and it's inspiring, at least. So, so you've got at least a certain amount of the gameplay established before we went to Scott to like get him to like make these ridiculous piles of flesh. Yeah. Like, oh. it, like it wouldn't have been worthwhile <laughs> until we actually had something to play. Right. It would have been. It wouldn't have been lost work, but it would have been undue, undue work, unnecessary work. Yeah. So I'm curious. So Christina, the yes. uh, is is the strategy that you use uh, different when you're playing by yourself in this versus uh, when you're playing with other people? Yeah, I mean, if you're playing with other people, you can kind of set up zones or, or like, tasks, you know, like have someone's on, like, juggernaut duty or, you know, or someone's, <laughs> someone's like, taking care of, like, the right side of, you know, of the wall or that kind of thing. Um, you know, by yourself, you have to run around and do it all yourself. So you end up needing to sort of, like, peel away from the, from the plague wall in order to, like, fight the zombies and keep, keep from getting overwhelmed? Yeah, I usually try to group them up and then throw them all at them. That's that's a favorite strategy. Of mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so Aaron, like a big part of like going from that initial gray box to an actual finished product was having to play test this again oh, yeah. and again and again. And that oh, was yeah. that was part of your job was making that happen, right? <laughs> yeah, we had play tests almost every day. <laughs> What I did was I gathered a list of people in the office, and I had a couple of lists. So we had our noob list, the straight-up noobs that couldn't really play the game that well or either weren't as experienced. And then we had our, like, mid-core gamers, and I had a list of names for them. And then we had, like, our, holy crap, they're, like, <laughs> professional, <laughs> like, mastermind players that we would come in. And so... Um, we set up different levels of playtests where we would either have noobs, midcore, masterminds, or we would mix them up. And then we also had a schedule where we would do single player, twos, threes, and four players so that we could get different types of feedback for these guys. So you just wanted, like, every single playtest, you wanted to be learning something different about a different way yes. to play because there's just so many different ways that players could, different kinds of players that could approach this, right? Oh, yeah. You wanted to yeah. test everything. And it had to be tuned for each group, you know? So how do you balance something like that? Like so, so that yeah, so, how do you so many different kinds of people can play it and still have a good time. How do you think about it? It's really just trying to shoot for the center line. Like you'll get, as, as Aaron pointed out, you get your. We have our top tiers, and we have people who aren't as top yet. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to ask which which list am I on, Aaron? Um, <laughs> I don't think you want. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I mean, it's just uh, you, you get your floor and you get your ceiling. You try and basically just work in between those. Um, it, it's interesting to watch the spiking uh, as you go back and forth as you play with people and you're just you're tuning over and over again. It really just comes down to numbers and time. Um, 
like I would probably the third or fourth fourth person in the studio who's played it the most. Christina's definitely first. <laughs> Christina's also our dedicated fire tester. <laughs> <laughs> she loves Molotov. Oh. There's nothing wrong. Well, sure, I was gonna finish this. <laughs> <laughs> see, let's. Uh, I'm gonna take our camera down so we get to see. Oh, you're getting really close Isn't to the end of the slide. Yeah, I thought I was gonna finish it that time around, but. Uh, so, so did you always have the thing where, um, like, like where where it, it it's it's vulnerable and then it suddenly becomes not vulnerable, or the the, the segments of the health bar? Like, how did you sort of arrive at, at at the way it actually works under the hood? So we started off with just allowing you to set it into a vulnerable state and then attack it. Um, very resourceful people here. <laughs> Learn that they can do a lot of damage real fast. So it's 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 for lack of a better terminology when talking about play wall, it was organic. Uh, we we basically just try, try, try. Um, the the breaking of a certain point in time where the um, where it goes invulnerable again is somewhat of a classic, especially for a boss situation and this being end game. We took a lot of inspiration from boss style gameplay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so, so part of like the reason why it kind of like it, 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 it you have the segmented health bar and stuff like that is, 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 is partly so that you know players can't just annihilate the entire yeah. health bar in one go. And we have like, I mean, you see them all the time, but we have excellent players. Like, we see all of the streams. You guys are pros, so no, we've got to make it hard for you. You can't just give yeah. you the cookie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> we definitely had a couple of play tests here where some of the um, more New players rage quit because it was tuned up. And we were like, Actually, we're okay with you rage quitting. I think that's fine. <laughs> that's intended. So uh, Christina just beat the first plague wall. So congratulations there. How are you doing on um, on equipment, Christina? Uh, <laughs> just like I'm I being chased. Up. No ammo. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to check right this second. I'm sorry. You got so many zombies around you. Uh, yeah, I have no ammo. Um, let's see. When I was doing a little practice beforehand, I actually did the second wall with no ammo, so I oh, could wow. do it, but... <laughs> I, I actually kind of like to see that, I but do I, I don't want to tell you how to do that on the air. I think she's getting it. She's got those two screamers, and yeah, the screamers become a huge pain. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, Awesome Twitch Dude uh, wants to know, what was the hardest part about making the gauntlet? Is there a hardest part, or um, just all hard? <laughs> I mean, spawning. Uh, what we did, well, what we did in this situation was basically turn spawning on its head. Like we usually, I mean, I don't know how far. Go, go okay. yeah, in, in um, detail. People love them. We we use we primarily use the, the query system built in, so you just pick a bunch of points around. But this is a much more curated spawning situation. Plus, we wanted finite control on how many and of what type, and so that a couple programmers. Who were awesome people did a lot of good work for us to get that stuff done. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know, are we having everyone in? Can I just drop names? Like uh, that? If, uh, that? If, if you if you want to give people credit, yeah, I'm sure nobody I mean, will mind. Yeah, you got Peter G, you got Peter Lim, which I guess is technical design, but I mean, might as well be a coder as well. Um, J Dog, we've had so many good people like working on the things. And breaking systems that honestly are solidified and worked great. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, that's one of the one of the big uh, one of the big challenges of Heartland was the fact that so much of State of Decay 2 was built specifically so that we could make random things happen without a lot of control. And then Heartland was all about doing the opposite, <laughs> all about which is control. making very specific thing, th things happen with a lot of control. Yeah. So well, you know, I ended up like struggling to use the character data system to make a bunch of specific characters when we built that system to make random characters. And similarly, you know, we built that spawning system specifically to make a lot of random zombies yeah. happen all over the place with no control. Mm -hmm. And then you had to make it do something very specific. So it's a whole other thing going on. <laughs> um, so Gooniverse says it seems like Heartland introduced a lot of new animations effects, map density was different uh, compared to the other maps can you guys talk about that at all? Um, I'm not sure exactly what what Gooniverse is going for but like I, don't know, I guess what was there anything else about working on Heartland that just was very different from, from the original State of Decay 2? Of course, both of you joined the team pretty much for Heartland, didn't you? So for you, so I guess, I don't know, did Heartland uh, surprise you with anything, you know? Uh, all of it, really? I mean, <laughs> yeah. the curated characters. Um, 
Some of the characters surprised me. Oh, actually. Yeah. oh really? So actually, I'm curious. Like, like which 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 characters are kind of your, your favorite characters in Heartland? I think Reba's probably my favorite. Well, we made a good mm -hmm. choice here then. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I take her into the gauntlet as well. Yeah. But is, is, is she your favorite for like like mechanical reasons or for character reasons or both? Actually, yeah. She's just so feisty, and her stats are like really yeah. nice. And then she's a fighter, and her weapons, but she also has this totally cool attitude. I just don't care about anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I like so her um, the file name for her is badass. Uh, which so basically she was built from the ground up yeah. to be a badass character. Uh, what about you, Walter? You got a favorite well, character? Just actually to go on that, she's such the diner uh, waitress. Oh like, yeah. You walk in and uh. like no one robs this place because she will <laughs> take everyone out. <laughs> um, I have actually a tie for uh, uh, Larice and I forgot the guy's name and that's horrible. Uh, uh, which one? Um, the the ex-con. Oh oh, uh, Quincy. Larice yeah, and Quincy, Quincy the, the Quincy main characters. Uh, both of them have. I felt like. You guys did, you and Andy did a great job giving them motivation and giving them personality, sound and everything. It's just, yeah, those are the two that I like the most. So I, I think, yeah, that's that's one of the benefits of having, like, a specific story that we're telling with Heartland is that you can you imbue the characters with so much more, like, sort of weight and passion behind them. Whereas, you know, uh, there, there's a lot of benefits to doing random characters, but that's a cost that you pay. Like, we have such a huge variety of characters, and it's great for that purpose. Mm -hmm. But no one of them really stands out as being, you know, like a memorable character. And so it's like, it's nice that we've got Heartland so we can kind of hit both, right? We can sort of have the version of the game where all the characters are random, and then the version of the game where you really get to know these people and feel like you can connect with them. Yeah. Let's see here. Oh, um, <laughs> Blaze Experience uh, wants to know, uh, Christina, have you tried speedrunning Heartland or the Gauntlet yet? Some of the community is getting ready uh, uh, to try to get through it. I have not. Um, I, I kind of like to take my time and I, you know, I like to loot every single container and, you know, like I'm not really a speedrunner. So, but we, we had, uh, people who yeah. are kind of specialized during, uh, during, uh, development. Aaron, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Like, who would actually, their job was to run through Heartland as fast as possible? Did, yeah, did, well, we had QA doing rabbit, rabbit runs. No, no we call rabbit <laughs> runs. Rabbit yeah. runs. <laughs> Uh, so, so what's that about? Like, what do you do? Uh, QA would just run through the gauntlet over and over again as fast as they could for a Sorry. little while. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we actually had a couple. Um, so we had Foggy when he was here. Mm -hmm. He ran through it as fast as he could with as few floater grenades as he could to see <laughs> how. Um, and that's like our master player. So we had to see if it was hard enough for him. Yeah. So, so and, and was it hard? What, did he did he think it was satisfying when he? He felt pretty satisfied. Yeah. yeah. I saw him go down a couple of times. I might yeah. have had a grin on my face. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, can I jump back for oh, a moment? Yeah, uh, Goonie's question about um, density is actually very apt because this map's smaller than the other three. So, mm -hmm. in that shrinkage alone, you end up getting more density. And mm -hmm. yeah, it was it's really interesting. Driving on uh, Trumbull streets because mm -hmm. it's like a roadblock every few <laughs> seconds. Like, oh, hold on, I gotta, all right, I'm gonna go around this. Yeah, it's kind of funny because you know, in the original game, you know, it, it was made for way less powerful hardware, right? And so one of the reasons why there's so many roadblocks everywhere is to slow the player down so they, can't, so they can't hit stream, <laughs> the, the edges of streaming boundaries uh, so fast. Because players would, would very frequently just sort of see pop in or leave the world and stuff like that when they were testing the early you know, State of Decay 1. And so they had to make the world convoluted in that way. Uh, you know, fill the road with, with, with cars and stuff like that. So you, you had to be really good to dodge through the cars really quick uh, and try to make, you know, fast progress. And so since we're being faithful to that, it's like, you know, even though State of Decay 2 can be much more open, you can have a place like, uh, like I keep wanting to call it our internal name, Meager Valley. Mm. You got a place like Meager Valley where it's just wide and flat and open. You can drive in any direction and there's nothing in your way. That wasn't going to be possible <laughs> in the original no. State of Decay. So it's kind of like we're going back to an earlier era of the franchise. Mm. Um, Dunedain asks, is Reba's fighting supposed to be a five-star maximum? Um, I, I don't think so. Is she stuck at five stars? Is that a bug? Or, or we just kind of haven't gotten there yet? Uh, I think she, I think that's the highest she gets. I think that might be a weird mistake, because... I actually read a bug on that this morning, so... 
Okay, well, cool. I, I, I just prioritized that bug this morning to I'm see. I'm pretty sure someone's about to assign yeah. that bug to me. <laughs> uh, so, okay. Uh, I didn't I didn't see that until now. There certainly was no intent for her to have a five-star maximum. Uh, butchery is supposed to go all the way to the top. So yeah. I have to figure out what's up with that. Because, I, I mean, I would have to manually limit it. And I think the I can see the two empty stars at the end. And the two empty stars, usually, if they're not there if the skill is limited. So that's... Oh, I love really fascinating, confusing <laughs> yeah, bugs. Weird. By the way, um, uh, I should point out that we've got a giveaway going on right now. I mentioned this during the pre-stream, but for those of you who are watching this, uh, starting at 2 o'clock, this is a goodie bag that uh, Megan made for you guys. She made two of these. There's a bunch of, there's stuff from E3, there's pins, there's I think some gummy bears, there's some five hour energy. It's like, it's a care package for people who want to stay up all night playing State of Decay 2. Um, so she made two of them. And so if you guys want to win one of these, what you got to do is type exclamation point enter into the chat. Um, around 2.45, we're going to stop taking entries and, uh, and we're going to do a random drawing and two of you are going to get these things because that's how many Megan made. So uh, if you were interested in that, please hit uh, the thing that I just put down there in the, on the screen. Type that in into the chat and you'll be entered, I promise. Uh, what else did we want to talk about? So, oh, Aaron, you were one of our representatives Me. at E3. <laughs> yeah, so like, um, what was it like at the booth? Like how, you know, what, what was like sort of showing this for the first time right after it was announced? Oh, it was pretty exciting. We had lots of fans stop by. Um, Lots of press. I don't have you on the camera. That's embarrassing. Okay, uh, there. <laughs> I know, right? See, this is why I need it here. I need to like look at myself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We were uh, we were talking before the stream about the fact that you know, we've got a three camera setup in here, um, but we don't have enough monitors, and so there's just not enough screens for us all to see what's going on. And so we're all just flying blind here. Like, uh. to whatever degree this stream works at all is a giant miracle because it's it's, <laughs> it's just a disaster here. Uh, but anyway, like, eh. but E3 went well? Yeah, lots of people stopped by the booth, tons of players. Um, we had so many press come by, so it was pretty great. Um, and we were in the Xbox experience, you know, we were in like a corner and we had four stations. Um, it was pretty awesome. I flew down there on Saturday and um, set up all of our builds on our computers and everything. So I flew down actually with all the builds on my person. I was like so nervous because right, we can't send them because it's so NDA and yeah. all of that stuff. So, um, you know, I got our fresh cut builds and I put them in my bag and I was like, Nobody take my stuff. Did, did, did you have a briefcase with with um, with, the with, with a handcuff? Yeah, I should have. I thought about it. I was like, how do I keep these safe? Like <laughs> and then um, I had them all encrypted and stuff, so I worked on them down there. It was, at first, all the computers were just crashing uh, oh. because they were overheating. So I had like all these people in my booth <laughs> fixing our setup and stuff. But after that, it was it's like fill the desks with little fans or something. They actually, yeah, I really? had to have one of the guys come that built the shelving unit. And he came in with like a huge box fan, was like cutting stuff out of the shelves and putting fans in. I had nice. the computer build guys coming and turning the fans on so that they were acting as if the computer was overclocking. So they were just like whooshing. You could like feel a breeze from under there because <laughs> they were packed in. After a while at E3, I bet having a, a fan and a breeze nearby was probably pretty good, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's actually that's actually giving me flashbacks because um, over the weekend it was my wife and I anniversary. We're out celebrating. Ooh. Thank you, 16 years, um, and we're so excited because you know we have old enough kids. We can leave our kids at home. We can actually go on a date for our anniversary. It's so awesome. And while we're out having a great time, uh, my four-year-old son floods the bathroom. <laughs> he, he, turns on, he turns on the sink. He, he's very good. He's fastidious about washing his hands after he uses the potty, which is great. But he left the sink on. And it filled the entire bathroom floor, started pouring down into the vent, directly into our furnace, through the cracks in the floor, dripping down from the ceiling before our oldest daughter notices it. And the, so oh, then she panics and she calls us, gets all the towels out, and, fill, and so we ended up, actually we spent the weekend of our anniversary cutting holes in our ceilings and walls and sticking fans yep. up inside to dry everything. And it turns out we actually did it. Like, we're not going to get black mold in our house now. So, but, I but, think that qualifies you to work at E3. Yeah, I think probably <laughs> so. Well, it qualifies my wife to work at E3. I was doing, like, the dumb labor. She was actually doing the strategizing and the planning of what we were, she actually knows how houses work, uh, and I just know how <laughs> video games work. That's all I know, so. Um, but yeah, so so you're giving me horrible flashbacks. Uh, so uh, so why did we why did we decide to do a gauntlet in the first place um, in in Heartland? Well, uh, 
we wanted something to go along with the bloater grenades with the new uh, the new weapon feature. And I mean, we're a small team. You can't really throw a lot of people at it. Uh, it's just kind of you, you have these kind of boilerplate situations. You just want to run a specific thing multiple times and have slight tuning knobs. So in a lot of ways, for our time frame and for our our power, or like our team power, it made a lot of sense. Um, it's, it's, it's yeah. I mean, we're a game of systems, so to mm -hmm. do another system, no matter how much of the other systems we broke to get it done, um, <laughs> it's just it was it was a better fit for our style of development. It's the it's the kind of boss battle that makes sense in State of Decay yeah. Two because it's a system and it's all about marshalling your resources and getting them to the right place. Yeah. yeah, and we've we've got the bosses and the the freaks. Like, I yeah, mean, she's been. Is this the same jug? Have you been getting chased by the same no. jug? No. <laughs> Of them. She's like 20 more jugs. Out. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I look yeah. over, it's the jug and you're yeah. all in front of it. Nice vehicle with the teeth on the front. Oh, yeah. But also, the gauntlet just makes people get wrecked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's true. Which is what end game content should do. Yeah. yeah, you know, like. We want you to, I mean, no, that's messed up. We don't want you to suffer. <laughs> we want you to suffer. <laughs> we want you to achieve. Undead labs. <laughs> we want you to suffer. It's in the name. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. want to be challenging and fun. But, I mean, it, it, permadeath is kind of, it, it's actually kind of more of an issue in, in Heartland than anywhere else because you've only got, what, a dozen characters yeah, to pick from? Resource. Yeah, you only have so many you can recruit. So once, you, once you're down to your last character, that really is your last character. Yep. <laughs> Good luck on the gauntlet there. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Aaron, it, take, it takes a lot of people with a lot of very different skills in order to make something. Like, Walter was, was referencing the fact that he was a designer on this, but there were so many other people who had to contribute to this. Like, coordinating an effort like that has got to be a huge challenge. Yes. That's, <laughs> that's why they pay me. <laughs> <laughs> But like seriously, like how many like how many different disciplines had to come together to sort of make like make this work? Because a lot. Somebody had to make yeah. the art of the gauntlet, right? And yeah. So we have world building, which actually places everything. Um, like the maze of it was created yes, by the world the builders. Yes, the maze of it, and then we have artists actually putting you know the props in and making stuff look cool, doing all the set dressing. Um, we have Walter over here doing the design and balancing all of that madness that's in there. <laughs> um, we have, you know, AI. We have our gameplay and programming resources. So there's quite a few disciplines in there. And, and always forgotten audio. <laughs> always forgotten. <laughs> yeah. And we we had some issues for audio in here, too. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I, the, the entire blood plague is a challenge for audio, right? Because it's just yeah. all the zombies sound different. And we don't actually have yeah. a lot of room in our like memory budget to yeah. make all the zombies sound different. Yes. There's also um, lighting, um, which was a huge thing in this. So I don't know if yeah. any of you guys have played the gauntlet at night, <laughs> but... Uh, yeah. Joe jo said that Christina <laughs> specifically requested that our save game start at dawn. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. yes. Some bad experiences or something? Like <laughs> yeah. It used to be a lot darker when we first started the playtest, and then um, when we did more tuning and we had Matt, our lighting guy, come in and play it himself as well so that he could see what was happening and then that's when we put all of the you know burning trash fires in and like all of that <laughs> stuff so that there was some light because it was metaphorically a burning trash fire before yes and now, <laughs> now, now, it really now it's is. only literally a burning uh -huh. trash fire and then those trash fires actually caused audio issues oh yeah so, i remember that yeah oh my gosh <laughs> and then of course qa resources so so much qa we have we tapped our QA <laughs> to the brink with this. We leaned hard, yeah. Yeah, we leaned really hard on QA for that. Yeah, well, when you're whenever you're talking about how ridiculous this was for QA, like, we had a little smile on Christina's face. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I can't tell if it's a rueful smile or, like, a proud smile. Yeah. It's that PTSD smile, she's just looking off in the distance. Yeah. <laughs> like staring at the middle distance, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so, Blaze Experience wants to know, uh, can you talk about the initial concept of the Plague Wall? How was that idea formed? So, we have the hearts, and the hearts are an interesting, specific location situation. Uh, we always want to bring more new interesting stuff to the community whenever we're going to improve on anything. And the idea of it kind of uh, 
like what would happen when truly let loose if, if, if the blood plague went? It's another jug, okay. isn't it? It's huge. <laughs> well, I did I did just like run away instead of fighting them, but I just heard this like roar, roar. out of the side of yeah. the like, oh, Jesus. Yeah, I think our audio is turned down even more than uh, the audience's. And so so we only hear the big stuff over here. <laughs> but uh it was it was the idea of what happened with plague. How does it grow? How does it change? What what can it do? And I mean, you've got, oh, I'm going to mess his name up, and this is horrible. Is it Doug? Uh, Mr. Williams? Mr. Yeah, Doug Williams, Williams, yeah. Um, the the and, other Williams. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and his just, like, love for just concepting these really positive words, not, not negative words. So, <laughs> Interesting so, things. Disgusting. Yeah, beautiful. disgusting was the first thing I was like. Yeah, so, so if you, if you, um, if you look at Doug's Twitter account, which is at Doug Blot, uh, and look back through his history, you'll, you'll, see, you'll see a phase where he was literally making everything out of meat. He had a meat gun yep. and like a meat car. We got a meat van in the Independence Pack because he was going through his meat phase. And so walls out of meat was just sort of the next, uh, you know, the Proper next logical thing. Yeah. yeah, the next evolution of it. So it's so sort of, the, and then and then you've got these like, you've got. The bloater belly that's sort of the weak point mm -hmm. that is also related to the fact you're you're, you're harvesting from bloater bellies like yeah. that, that all kind of came together really nicely yeah conceptually it feels like it all hangs together I mean, it came so early too so it wasn't something that was like oh suddenly we got we got to figure out to connect it it was literally like bloaters growth mutation got to go <laughs> just go it's like all right let's do this it's one of those like it, there's this interesting so it's like there's a mental process where it's like when you hit on the right idea for something it's like it snaps it in place and all. In a, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, there's no. Okay, we're done. We've, yep. We're done brainstorming. We found the idea. Um, so, Beats and Buttons wants to know uh, who came up with the designs for the Echo weapons. Uh, I don't know about the who necessarily. I mean, we've got our weapons team led by you know uh, you know get Dan Mode and Mark Lautenbach and uh, and Brant Fitzgerald Brent. who all contribute to that. <laughs> and, and 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 Brian uh, Giami for a really long time has been uh, the designer who's involved with the weapons. The interesting thing about the Echo weapons though was they were created last what was it October? Uh, they were created for the Zed Hunter Zed, pack. Yeah. They were originally made for Zed Hunter, um, but because Zed Hunter, we really wanted it to be focused on the crossbows and on some of the other like the the, the crazy consumables coming from uh, these Echo Lab people. Uh, that we we actually decided to to not steal the thunder of the crossbows with these new Echo weapons. And so the weapons team made all of these fancy Echo weapons, and then we didn't put them in the game. And oh look, here comes Brand. I couldn't stay away. I just had to say hi. Did so, you hear us say your name? Hi everybody. <laughs> we're like Beetlejuice. We're, <laughs> yeah, we're talking about the Echo weapons right now, and and the fact that basically you guys made those for the Z Hunter uh, pack, and then they just sat there for a really really long time. And when Heartland came up, we're like, hey, can we just can we sneak these into Heartland? And Quinn was like, yeah, we'll find somewhere to stick them. Please. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and we stuck them. We crazy. stuck them hard. The, the brands, the brands have exploded Brant in chat the now. Man. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> screaming your name, Brant. So, uh... You finally, it's nobody's like to be a boy band. <laughs> <laughs> finally. That's every day of my life, buddy. No, I'm just This is why no one walks with you afterward. <laughs> oh, believe me. That's just one of many reasons. Uh. So, um, we got a couple of questions that are not directly about Heartland. One is, uh... Uh, are we going to get keyboard and mouse support uh, on the Xbox for State of Decay 2? Uh, so that, that's a fairly recent feature that uh, Microsoft added to the Xbox that it, it now supports uh, mouse and keyboard. It's it's kind of on the list of things we might uh, do. It would take us specifically making some changes on our side, and so we just have to prioritize that with all the other things that we want to do because you know Heartland is definitely not the last thing we're doing. We got a bunch of stuff in progress, and so so that's on the list. Um, we'll we'll have to see when we get around to it. I actually just talked with. Uh, Susan Olenek, our, our UX uh, designer today, about exactly that feature. So, who knows, right? Uh, we can't, but we're not going to promise you a timeline on that or anything. Look, I got I got to jump in for a second. Everyone loves hanging out with Brand. That was a joke. Okay, I'm out. I, I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> See, now he's offended, and I feel bad for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> he's seriously. The things I have said to that man on this stream, you have not even gotten close. <laughs> Uh, the number of bald jokes I have made on this stream. Oh. I know, right? I'm a terrible oh, human being. I'm the worst person Wait, in the world. Was that a short world. joke on him? Yeah, oh, I did. <laughs> I didn't make it. That was yes. earlier yes. during the pre stream. He called me short earlier I didn't call, when you weren't here. I didn't call you short. I said you were low in the frame. Yeah. And I had to point the camera down. We all down. know what low in the frame point, means, Jeff. I had to point the camera down. <laughs> 
That's uh, that's just how it works. It's it's it's, yes. it's physics. Um, it's geometry. Um, so awesome Twitch dude wants to know if we're ever adding helicopters to the game. It's your job to say no, Aaron. So I think I should just leave that to you. No. <laughs> no. no. That's gonna no. be a no for me. I have me. to go delete something. <laughs> Helicopters are not on my not on my yeah. list. So just like we were talking about the fact that we had to put a bunch of like roadblocks and things in the original State of Decay to kind of control the players' movements, because that's what the map needed in order to actually work as a map. Very similarly, we built the maps of our world without helicopters in mind. Uh, and helicopters would change the entire calculation of, of how our map should work, and we, we could not just introduce them. Like, we would have to build the game from the ground up with helicopters in mind. So, sorry, that one probably is never going to happen. And when I, I, when I say probably, I'm being generous to the fates. Uh, it's, it's not going to happen. Actually, I would not want to put it in because Christina would probably... Want to fuel air fuel bomb at that point? <laughs> <laughs> and take out two city blocks with this thing. Uh, so hey, uh, I've lost track of, of 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 what we're actually doing right now. Where, which which plane wall are we on? Where, Where am I? Three. Wall three. three. We're on wall three. Okay, we're, we're at the last segment. We're doing pretty good. Wow, C congratulations! This is why we have Christina in here because there's no way like the the reason why um why. You know, Brant bowed out this time because because I asked him. So, Brant, how are you with the uh, <laughs> with the gauntlet? And he was like, "Someone else should do this." <laughs> and so, so we're like, "Christina, could you come help us out?" Because yeah, I think Brant and I might be on the noob gamer list. Uh, Aaron was nice enough not to say so directly. Brant's but, not uh, on the noob gamer list. He's just he's uh, entertaining when he's challenged. <laughs> Brant's like in our mid core. Oh category. no, Brant's better than me. <laughs> so. That's why. That's why Brant plays in here, and I don't. I just, I just talk. I'm really, really good at talking constantly. Your, your oration skills are top notch. Like you're full stars, and that's great. That's a good thing. Yeah, it's, it, it is, it is a fifth skill that prevents me from having other fifth skills, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> which is, which is kind of the problem. I can't be a mechanic because I'm, I've just got oration maxed Ooh, out. Ooh, rollerblades. Oh, skateboard. I'm into the skateboard idea. Oh, that would be cool. Adding a skateboard to the game? Yeah. I, I think bicycles, right? Because they're Bikes. they're quiet. You know, unless we can do an upgrade to bicycles where you put uh, baseball a, cards a card in the wheels in. <laughs> to attract the zombies. Jeez. Uh, uh, let's see here. So Michael McPherson wants to know, are we going to get any facilities or traits from Heartland into the main game? Um, and I, that would be very hard because basically we built the traits of the characters and the facilities at Jurassic Junction specifically for each other. And so it's hard to bring a lot of that same stuff over to the main game because it just wouldn't have anything to do. Like a lot of the fifth skills that are really useful in, in Heartland would have absolutely nothing to do in, in, in the main game. Uh, it would be possible maybe to bring versions of some of like the smaller traits that are on the characters and, and, and make them universally available. That, that actually wouldn't be hard. I could probably go back to my desk and do that right now if you want. Uh, but. Yeah, doing, moving things over uh, you know, wholesale would be tough. There's actually a question here. Uh, people are wondering if the Plague Walls could ever get into the core version of the game. And I imagine it would be a similar uh, kind of challenge. It's like, we would have to bring the bloaters as well, right? You know, we'd have to bring the bloaters. And then, yeah, my, uh, I, I'm not going to say anything possible from a producer, because it will get me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, uh, but I mean, they would have to. <laughs> Like you, you had to very specifically plan out that maze and marshal yeah. for, for those walls to be blocking something. Like most of our map is just so wide open, what would the wall be blocking, right? I could see, I could see small, unique situations. Um, ask a design. You know this. This is why we don't ask questions to each other because our minds will go. Off. I could, I could see doing something where we lock off a house. I'm not going to say anymore. I'm already feeling the dagger. <laughs> As always. Things that we say on this stream are not promises. Uh, things we say on this stream are just fun ideas that we're tossing around. Like none of us work on the game; we're just a bunch of players together talking about what, what, what would be neat. Uh, so Aaron does not have to stare daggers at us, or now she's got a pleading face. Uh, so <laughs> please stop saying these things, Jeffrey. Stop it. Maybe we could get a new trait called uh. helicopter, and it always makes it so when they're your follower, they aren't near. So oh, you're constantly getting jumped by zombies. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. 
We could get a helicopter in that way. <laughs> Magic Man seventy nine wants to know if we're gonna add a suggest a, a bullfighting skill uh, specifically to make you good against juggernauts. Like you could pull out a pull out a cape. <laughs> I, I I don't know if, if if it would just be like you've got a you've got a trait or a skill that says you're just good at bullfighting and then it just gives you bonuses against juggernauts. Well, that's not exciting. Extra yeah, life frames on like your dodge. Man. Maybe so. Yeah, it's like it's kind of hard to figure out exactly what you'd want to do. Uh, and also, how many bullfighters are in the United States? That's illegal because it's cruel. So, <laughs> yeah, it would be hard to find those. Um, see here. Oh, there was a question way back when that I was going to get to. Oh, and so Awesome Twitch Dude wants to know, um, who did the face capture for Isby? I don't know. Uh, you know, Matt probably knows. Yeah. Matt would know. There are a few people that we know uh, who, you know, we try really hard not to out people by their faces in the game and so but there are several people that we all know who are in Heartland who have their faces there and uh, we'll just leave it there and you guys can um, you know uh, try to guess and we're not going to tell you the answers <laughs> unless they come on this stream and then you'll then it'll be pretty obvious ooh weather see if you guys talk about crazy things I can talk about crazy things. oh somebody brought up weather yeah. someone always brings up weather <laughs> mm -hmm. That's, it's one of everyone's favorite get, favorite uh, features that we don't add uh, so okay, so awesome Twitch dude asks, can you explain the gauntlet ending? And I don't know how much we want to. I mean, yeah, there are some things that we should not say. Yeah. Because well, things. ultimately, it's a love story. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. So I think. <laughs> Maybe the context that I can give you is uh, when we came out with the, um, the with the last expansion to State of Decay 1, which was the Year 1 Survival Edition, which added a few things, including Cleo Drops. Uh, the thing that I said then was, you know, on, on, on this stream was that the reason we added Cleo Drops was because we wanted people to understand that this franchise was going to keep growing. So we started a mystery and didn't solve it in, in the Year 1 Survival Edition so that you would know we were very serious about continuing the franchise. And so this is kind of the same thing. You know, the, 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 the way that it ends, the fact that it ends on a cliffhanger and introduces some new ideas that haven't been in the game before, the reason we did that was because we want you guys to understand that we're going to continue de uh, developing this franchise. And what exactly shape that takes, we are not announcing yet. But uh, we, we've got we got big plans. And, and we want you guys to be in on that idea, the excitement that we're feeling about our big plans. So... Oh, and um, I know I'm jumping off script. I'm supposed to wait for your... There's no script. Go for it. No, no, no. All of our hearts are in it. Thank you very much. If What if God was? All of our hearts are in heart. <laughs> yeah. Um... Blaze Experience wants to know, um, in designing the gauntlet, was it deliberately constructed to have no containers to jump on top of for walls two and three? We, we went back to and forth about so many that. times. We <laughs> attempted to minimize uh, exploits. <laughs> some, yeah. some locations may have been more exploited than others. We have some QA testers here <laughs> that are amazing at finding exploits. <laughs> so... We, we changed a lot of that. So was getting up on top of containers for a while, was that just sort of like god mode, basically? It's, so when yeah. you have, yeah, whenever you have a yeah. horde mode situation, or especially when you're being chased, the player leaving breadcrumbs in a way, you get situations just based on how we have to do things overall, animation, AI, that can become, I mean, exploitative. You can do things and, I don't want to say ruin the experience, but hinder the experience to the point where you break sense of disbelief. And that's what we all want to keep the player in, is sense of disbelief. You want them to believe and keep moving forward. And once you find a way to remove that veil, you lose a good chunk of the fun. So Yeah. You're just hurting yourself, really. Yeah. <laughs> you've, you haven't just cheated the game, you've cheated yourself. Yeah, you cheated yourself. That's <laughs> so true. Um, well, okay, I should follow up. I yeah. do want to say... Um, Christina not only was able to find some really choice locations, but has a very, she's very good at being convincing. So the ones that are still around are not necessarily exploitative, <laughs> they're just good ideas. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I should mention one last time, this is your very last chance everybody. If you want to enter our giveaway, hit exclamation point enter in the chat. Uh, probably in about one minute, uh, we're gonna close the doors on that and Megan is gonna find the winners. And, and the wall uh, will come down. Yeah, and if you if you uh, if you don't know what we're talking about, Megan made you guys some packages. She made you some care packages, and she's gonna send them to two of you uh, based on a random drawing, based on 
who types that in the chat? So type that in the chat. Uh, this is your last chance. Megan's going to close the doors, and then she's going to pick some winners, and we're going to announce them on here. So there is that. Hmm. So uh, Wade Johnson wants to know, um, are the missions still available after you complete the main story? So at, at the end of Heartland, you, know, you, you get to the ending, and then you can decide to keep playing if you want to. And I'm actually not sure what the answer to that question is. Do you guys know? Okay. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I think I think you can actually. Yeah, you can keep playing you the game. You can go back into the game, and I think it sets you back at the mission for Wall Four. Okay. So, yeah. so Wall Four will come back up, and then you can play the rest of the. Game. And so there's nothing that's stopping the other missions. Like, say, if you never recruited Isby or something like that, I think they would come be back. Able to go back and get her. I hope yeah. so. If not, um, please if not, send uh, uh, you know. <laughs> support. Not <laughs> to get to com is uh, where you report your uh, your bugs and problems that you find with the game. Uh, Joe Swarner uh, is the one who manages that, and he is awesome. Uh, and he and again, thank you to him for making this stream possible because he got to the you know he's the one who played all the way through Heartland and got to the got to this point because he is an expert player of our game. And so, if you want help with our game. Go to support.statedecay.com. Specifically, not if you want help like you're not good at it. If you want help because you've got a bug or something that's messing up with uh, your experience, go talk to him. He knows everything about the game, and he can help you out. Yep. Joe Love, exa exactly. Joe Love. Everybody's Everybody's got the Joe Love. <laughs> it's your stream, but I want to say spam the chat, Joe Love. But that's, that's not my stream. <laughs> oh, it's, it's your stream as much as any of ours. You're at Undead Labs. This is your stream. Mm -hmm. um, it's our stream. Hmm. Oh, so this is a question I meant to ask you earlier. Um, so, Toao Alex uh, wants to know, is it like a thing where the more players there are in the world, the difficulty of the waves has been increased, and the health of the wall has been increased, or is it like the same difficulty if you were playing solo? It scales. Yeah, so, and how does it scale? Like, what aspects of it scale? Uh, primarily composition of spawning and slight count modifications. Okay, so, so does it take more or uh, damage to take down the wall, or is the wall the same and it's just the resistance you get? It's, the wall stays the same. It's the wall being such a centralized, like, static figure, to modify its health with no understanding on the player side seems like a weird thing for, for us to do. It's almost like pulling the rug from under you. Yeah, so, no, that makes sense. You get a sense of, like, the, it takes this many blasts from this shotgun yes. to take it down, and if that suddenly changes and you don't know why, that's weird, right? Yeah. I mean, you, we do follow a progression of health per wall, but to change, like, wall one's health, you, 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 you learn things and we don't want to dissuade you from learning things and be mean and take that knowledge away in certain situations. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, like, giving players a sense that they've actually learned something, they understand how it works, yeah. is that's pretty valuable. Players, players like that, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, but then, then composition, so it's like more ferals, that kind of thing? So, yeah, you'll get an increase in all types. Certain things might spawn in only certain situations that wouldn't spawn in other combinations of players or player count. Mm -hmm. uh, and, again, it's just because if we didn't do that, you'd go, everyone would jump on four and just destroy it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So but instead, sense. you jump to four, and they destroy you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, uh, so where's where do you think the sort of the the, the sweet spot is as far as number of players? Because on I know on um, in Daybreak, three players was actually the hardest because you would, like it would ramp up to maximum difficulty at three players, but you still don't have the fourth player to push you over the edge. It does it does it go all the way up to like is is it different at four versus three? Like, are we accounting for different numbers of players all yeah. the way up? Um, so my personal opinion is I actually like soloing it. Um, primarily just because to go higher than that with groups of people who don't communicate well can be challenging. <laughs> um, <laughs> but a good, like, if you got the homie and you're running, like, a twos, you can easily run it. You just have to communicate. It's all about that. Another thing we wanted to facilitate was communication. Yeah, that was something we learned from the playtest a lot, right? Yeah. Which is the, 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 like, you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Like, we, that's totally why we did the playtest that way, so we pulled in two, three player, four player to see if it was fun, to see if it was scaling right, if it was still difficult. Yeah, twos are my favorite, actually. I yeah. like the two player because you get the backup and they can like watch your back when the jug's coming at you sideways and you can keep shooting at the wall while that's happening so you can maximize damage while the wall is vulnerable. So I think for me, that's my favorite strategy, but that makes sense. I don't know. Yeah, it's easier to communicate with two. Yeah, one thing, one thing that yeah, that I definitely noticed, like when I was participating in the playtest, it's like my team would often not do that well. But partly that was because we weren't communicating very well. Yeah, we would just sort of be doing our own thing. And, and when I learned to communicate a lot better, the teams that I was on would do better. Yeah. And, and that seemed it seemed like 
the, the difficulty of the game scaled directly with how well the team was Yeah, it was interesting to see like groups of people that would come in and just like yell at the screens but not talk to each other. <laughs> and Walter and I would be like, maybe maybe you should talk to each other. <laughs> 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 yeah. Some people really got wrecked on there. <laughs> well, it just told us that we were getting close to that edge. Yeah. Like, we were pushing them to the limit. And... Yeah. Right on the verge of success. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hard work and dedication. Um, so, uh, Kosakio Nodera. These are some great names. I know. As, uh, any news on adding customization on characters? No, no news on that. But uh, that's just because there's no news on anything <laughs> right now because we've just finished. We've just finished releasing something. Can we but breathe? We've got. We've got. <laughs> Can we breathe? Yeah, we've got a lot of um, a lot of plans for the future. So please stick around. Uh, so so this next week we're gonna do kind of a fun uh, uh, celebration and QA stream with with Joe Swarner. Uh, so come back next week for that. And then after that we're gonna start you know maybe trying to figure out what we can say about the future of the franchise. So uh, please keep coming back to the stream because whenever we have more to talk about, this is going to be the first place that you hear it. It's going to be right here. So uh, if you haven't followed us, please follow us, all that stuff. Um, I, I sound like a YouTuber now begging for follows, and that's not what I'm going to be doing. So. <laughs> I can say something. Please. Yeah. Um, I told you guys last time that I keep I am the keeper of the list. <laughs> so Jeffrey always talks about this list of all of the feedback from you guys and from all of our players. Um, we have internal lists of stuff, and I have this massive conglomerate list of all these things prioritized. And there are things on that list that I have prioritized. <laughs> so oh, funny. yes. That was, the vagueness in that was just, yes. it was like magnificent. I feel like the vagueness that just bounced off your elbow right onto the, <laughs> right onto the stake. That was, it was beautiful. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, yeah, awesome Twitch is trying to get us to say what's number one on the list. And that was the point of yeah. the joke, was her not telling you. Yeah. So, no. I can't tell even... you what's on the list or what's prioritized on the list, but I can tell you I have a list, and I have definitely prioritized stuff, and I have put people on things. <laughs> exactly. And I'm listening to you guys. Yeah. And, I mean, I might even be on a thing. <laughs> I might be on a thing right now that you guys might have asked for. And like Nobody Susan, knows. Susan might be on a thing. <laughs> We just don't even. No one can say anything. Um, so we've got a we got a little bit of time before Megan's going to be ready to announce the winners of our uh, uh, of our giveaway. And so let me just take a moment, real quick, to tell remind you guys that Refarium is a thing. Uh, so around the time uh, that we released Heartland, we made a relationship with this uh, site called Refarium, where they track you know the your social media engagement, they track the streams that you watch and stuff like that. And if you watch our streams or you watch streams of State of Decay 2 and you're registered at Refurium, uh, you can uh, get prizes and things. Go to the site and find out what the prizes are. I think some of them are like codes for stuff. So please, go to that site and check it out. We would love to have more people involved um, because, you know, it, you get free stuff and we get a lot of people watching our streams and it kind of helps everybody. So that's awesome. Oh, hey, look, we've got winners. Um, so Megan says that the winners of these beautiful care packages which have a water bottle in them and everything we're running out of these water bottles these are getting very rare uh the winners are psycho deceiver uh Great Wal names. Wal walter's Great loving names. these names these psycho awesome. deceiver and athy wanderlust oh my goodness <laughs> still Seriously. my beating heart jesus yeah we've got we've got some of the best <laughs> some of the best followers here on on on, on all of our channels here uh so Look at that trash fire on, on that night mode. You guys see that trash fire? Yeah. So okay. special message to Psycho Deceiver and Athy Wanderlust. If you're listening to me right now, uh, Megan's having trouble contacting you. So you need to email social at undeadlabs.com, identify yourselves, and claim your prizes. If you are not Psycho Deceiver or Athy Wanderlust, please don't do that because that's fraud. <laughs> and and we, don't, we don't want fraud. We, we, all, we all, all want to be, you know, law-abiding people here. I just accused everyone of a crime. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we've only got about six minutes left. Uh, if anybody's got any last minute questions or comments, uh, yeah, we'd love to hear them. Let's see here. <laughs> Mothrik asks, is it prosecutable fraud? Probably not. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Microsoft has a big law department. That's true. Yeah. We have like, oh man. We have lots of lawyers we've now. We've got lawyers. Yeah. 
That's crazy. <laughs> Rand Dad says, I feel violated now. I'm not a convict. <laughs> no. I'll see here. Uh, Dylan Hunko asks, will we ever get light machine guns? Uh, maybe. We're certainly looking into um, the best ways that we can deliver weapon packs. I know that we've we've delivered that uh, the World War II weapon pack recently, and one of the problems that people had was they had trouble finding all of the weapons. They were, they were kind of hard to get to. And so we're looking into that. We'd like to set up some way that makes it a lot easier for you guys to be able to, you know, for us to be able to expand the arsenal of weapons and give you guys easy access to it. Um, and so we're, we're thinking about that right now, and uh, maybe we'll have more to say about that in the future. Is it the bar LMG? Uh, yeah, the bar is technically. The I, bar is an LNG. I think it's technically treated as an LNG. Yeah. yeah. So, so I guess we've kind of got one then. Uh, one but of my, one of my favorite weapons. Yeah, no, that yeah, that is that is a favorite of mine too. I used to I used to basically snipe with it in Call mm -hmm. of Duty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Oh, and the sound on the bar—it's just so iconic. It's so it's heavy. Beautiful. Oh, it feels like. Sorry, I'm getting <laughs> getting <laughs> the vapors a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Thank you. Uh, we, we, we should have had you in here for the uh, World War II weapons announcement stream. You could have, like... I was actually uh, glass on my ear against the wall. The <laughs> Love the weapons that these guys put out. Yeah, uh, yeah we, got some, we got some bar fans uh, in, in, in the chat, too. And uh, unfortunately, yeah, so Mike Becker is saying, I don't think I've found a single World War II weapon oh. in the entire game. There's an entire trader for it, but they're a random trader. And so if you don't happen to roll the dice and get that random trader... You don't have easy access to weapons, so we're we'll see if we can find an answer for that sometime in the future. It's on the list. It's <laughs> on the list. <laughs> uh, oh, here's an interesting Heartland question. Bun D Games wants to know uh, why only one safe slot in Heartland. I wasn't in those discussions. I actually don't know the answer to that question. We wanted it to matter. Yeah. <laughs> like we wanted you to care. It's a story, and yeah. it should matter. And you should feel it, you know? <laughs> this is my one, this is my one Isby. This is my yeah. one Reba. I can't lose them. We're just doubling down on everything perma in the game. Yeah, point. exactly. It's our Iron Man. So where are, oh, holy crap! Yep. <laughs> She's, I, I think once night hit, uh, more of the PTSD kicked in. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Slowed down a little. So are we, are we still on wall three? No, nope, four. four. We're, We're on four? On wall yeah, four. Holy one crap. section left. Yeah. yeah. We might, I mean, I told you we. She's this played this one, so yes. many times. <laughs> okay, so I mean, uh, do you guys feel like staying a couple minutes extra just to see oh, if no. we can make it, or no. are we too far away? Christina's like, no, I got other things to destroy. <laughs> at. I got more <laughs> we have other things for her to test. Okay. And we, and actually, yeah, we, we all to have. Me. We all actually have jobs that we have to get back to. But uh, so we only got three, uh, two minutes left. Uh, so I should just remind folks. Uh, remember, referium.com. Go check that out. Um, you should also go to stateofdecay.com because you know if you missed it, we got a bunch of like posts and things that we made uh, about uh, about Heartland. And uh, actually, you know, I just I just really want to thank our guests here. Uh, I, let me let me put on the thing that's got your uh, your name tags. Look, oh, snap. it's Walter Williams and it's Aaron Anderson. Thank you guys so much for coming here and uh, telling everybody about the Gauntlet because you guys knew so much more stuff than than like Brand or I ever could have you know pulled out of our butts. So. Congratulations! Congratulations on a really good game mechanic that people are having a lot of fun with. You have soiled the yeah. information in my head with that. Yeah, same. I'm That's so all sorry. You now. <laughs> Just hope it. you guys like it and think it's challenging enough and fun and yeah. And thank you for playing. Yes, the yeah. team works super hard on the gauntlet. And uh, I should also especially thank Christina, who is very engaged with playing the game right now. But thank you so much for making this possible for us. Thank you for all your help making the, uh, the DLC too, Christine. <laughs> so she, she is barrel. getting very close to the end. So, so I guess we're gonna leave it here and cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's see. So just to remind everybody, State of Decay 2 Heartland. Uh, if you've got Game Pass, you basically already have it. If you don't have Game Pass, it's ten bucks. Uh, you can get it at the Microsoft Store. And we're just all really happy that you guys have come and played our game and made all, all this stuff that we get to do here. Uh, you guys have made it possible, and and you know we really appreciate it. So thank you, and uh, let's let's let these guys say goodbye. Bye. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> so now we've got 15 seconds of YouTube end screen, where we're still talking. Yeah. If we, want to, if we want to. Are Not anything. Did you get tomatoes when you went down to that one spot?
Really? Yeah, it's 